and welcome everyone to Mission Possible, Changing the Course of Dementia, Growing Public Health Crisis. I'm Molly French. I'm the Director of Public Health here at the Alzheimer's Association and joined by the Associate Director of Public Health, Mr. John Sheehan. And we have a fantastic panel of experts here today talking to you about Alzheimer's and other dementias as a rising public health problem. They're going to be giving you a little overview of the Healthy Brain Initiative uh, new roadmap, and then um, most importantly, sharing strategies for changing the course of dementia because the mission is possible. I do want to uh, acknowledge that we are recording today's webinar so that we can make it available to those who were unable to join uh, because of a time conflict. Uh, next week, we, I will be sending the recording out to all the webinar registrants along with links for the roadmap and other resources we featured. Uh, but today, um, after the webinar, uh, later on in a couple hours, uh, please look for an email. We'd like you to answer a couple questions about how we can help um, improve our webinar series. I um, do want to acknowledge the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, whose support enables us to offer uh, this webinar. But of course, the opinions expressed during the webinar are certainly just those of the individual presenters. But I uh, also do want to thank uh, CDC, the National Association of Counties, National Association of County and City Health Officials for co-hosting this webinar with us. We really. Uh, do appreciate that partnership. Uh, we're going to start today with, uh, with CDC discussing the growing burden and impact of Alzheimer's and other dementias on the nation. And then the National Association of Counties and National Association of County and City Health Officials will each speak about the need for a public health response to Alzheimer's and other dementias. And then we have the great privilege of hearing uh, two different examples of local public health departments who are um, taking steps to realize a better future for all communities impacted by dementia. Uh, I do want to note that our question and answer period will be at the end of the webinar, and we're just going to be taking a Q&A by the chat function through WebEx. So if you do have a question, comment, submit it through that. And if anyone is just joining us, I am Molly French from the Alzheimer's Association. And it is a great privilege uh, today to have so many uh, presenters. So that we can spend a little more time benefiting from their knowledge and their experiences, I'm just going to provide their names and titles. Uh, I will say that I am in awe of the contributions they have each made to the public health field. With us today and starting out will be Dr. Lisa McGuire. She's the team lead for the Alzheimer's Disease and Healthy Aging Program at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. We also are uh, pleased and privileged to have Mr. Nick Machion. He's the agency director for the County of San Diego Health and Human Services Agency, along with uh, Ms. Jan Jennifer Bransford Coons who is the Assistant Director of Aging and Independent Services, also with the County of San Diego Health and Human Services Agency. Ms. Rena Chudgar is the Director of Performance Improvement at the National Association of County and City Health Officials. And Dr. Joseph Iser is the Chief Health Officer for the Southern Nevada Health District. He's also on the board of the National Association of County and City Health Officials. So I think you can agree we do have a, a wonderful lineup for today. During the webinar, uh, the presentation is going to aim to enhance your knowledge about the growing impact of Alzheimer's and other dementias. You'll learn why public health action is needed today, working across the life course, how the new Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap, the updated roadmap, helps public health leaders chart a course to realize a better future and what tools and resources are available now uh, for public health departments to support roadmap implementation. First, some, just a quick background about the Healthy Brain Initiative. In 2005, uh, CDC and the Alzheimer's Association with congressional support established the Healthy Brain Initiative, or HBI, uh, with other public health partners to increase awareness and action on Alzheimer's brain health and caregiver support. 
as fundamental public health issues. Uh, the HBI collaboration has been strong and sustained through the years. Uh, for example, uh, because of the HBI, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System collects data on cognitive health and functioning and caregiving. And also in uh, 2010, with the release of the Healthy People 2020 objectives, those included for the first time to mention caregiving as national objectives. And then in the, in the uh, little roadmap you see there, the history roadmap, uh, there are uh, three uh, square books, and these are the roadmaps. They have been a central tool to advance the Healthy Brain Initiative by providing uh, crucial insights and guidance to the public health sector through the years. Uh, we are so thrilled uh, to be able to share with you at long last the third uh, and update to the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap Series um, because it's, it offers a wide array of expert-guided actions, case studies, implementation guidance so that you can efficiently and effectively address cognitive health across the life course in your existing public health function. And we're also really excited and looking forward um, this winter to releasing what will be kind of a, a new addition to our roadmap series. And this is going to be a roadmap that is specifically tailored to Native and tribal health leaders to um, support them, to, uh, help them start a conversation within their communities about the, the growing numbers of elders who are affected by Alzheimer's. Dr. McGuire, would you please now tell us more about how Alzheimer's is impacting the nation? Great. Thank you so much, Molly, for organizing this wonderful webinar for us. And so I'm going to start out today first talking about what is dementia. So dementia is not by itself a disease. Rather, it's an umbrella term that is used for a set of symptoms that are characterized by loss of cognitive functioning that is severe enough to interfere with someone's daily life. The most common type of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. However, scientists do believe that the majority of cases of dementia are possibly mixed, meaning they're one of these other types that are listed under the umbrella here. Next, please. When we look at the leading causes of death in the United States, we can see that Alzheimer's disease for people 65 years old and older is the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. Next slide. When we looked at some CDC analysis of death rates in the United States, we can see from this slide from 1999 through 2014 that the rates of Alzheimer's disease deaths increased 55% for all age groups. You can see that the largest increase is for those that were 85 years old and older. In a newly released CDC publication from a few weeks ago, um, authored by Kevin Matthews and colleagues, you can see that we released some new estimates on racial and ethnic disparities related to Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, as well as some projections. We expect that between 2014 and 2060, that the rate of Alzheimer's disease will nearly triple to 14 million. A few other important facts to help us set the stage today and for us to keep in mind as we talk about the new roadmap and some of the recommendations in the new roadmap, we know that 35% of people diagnosed with, are diagnosed with dementia. Let me say that again. We know that 35% of people or their caregivers who do have a dementia diagnosis are aware of that diagnosis. We also know that about 25% of hospitalizations among people who do have a diagnosis of dementia are, are preventable. We know also when we talk about people who do have dementia, we know that about 95% of the Medicare beneficiaries have one or more chronic health conditions. About 70% are living um, in a community dwelling environment or community sweating, setting and one out of three caregivers who are helping someone who has Alzheimer's or related dementia report that their health is getting worse. So these statistics give us a snapshot about when we're talking about the people that we all work with that have the Alzheimer's disease and dementia. It gives us a snapshot that not all of them are diagnosed. If they're diagnosed, they're not aware of it. 
Um, other chronic health conditions do exist. They may or may not be managed, which could result in preventable hospitalization. And the same thing with the caregivers who are helping provide this assistance, uh, their health is worsening. So CDC is a public health agency. And so one way that we approach health is from the public health perspective. So a traditional medical setting operates, as you can see from the left-hand side of the slide, one person at a time. The public health perspective operates by looking at groups of people or, or, or populations of people and trying to make an impact in a larger group of individuals. So if we talk about the new roadmap, we are approaching Coaching dementia from a public health perspective and also a life course perspective. So today what we understand on the science of brain change is associated with Alzheimer's and, and other dementias is many of those, those undercurring, underlying symptomologies and disease processes occur even decades or before the symptoms do appear. So this, we want to think about the Alzheimer's disease and related dementias from a life course perspective and throughout the entire continuum. So the purple portion of the graphic here is the continuum of dementia. The blue portion is, the pub, is designed for the public health community and opportunities for public health to intervene to reduce the risk of cognitive decline, um, encourage early detection and diagnosis of cognitive impairment and dementia, and ensure the safety of those individuals who have memory issues, as well as improving the quality of care for people impacted by dementia and their communities. So how can public health help? So some of the different topic areas that we see listed here are some of the ways that public health can help, and you will see those presented throughout our conversation about the new roadmap. So the new roadmap, shown here on the left-hand side, um, utilizes the framework on the right-hand side. This roadmap framework is organized by four essential services of public health. Assure a competent workforce, monitor and evaluate, develop policies and mobilize partnerships, educate and empower communities. And within each of these four domains, we're guided by three core principles to best reduce health disparities, collaborate across multiple sectors, and leverage resources for sustained impact. So now I'm gonna move, give you a glimpse of some of the priority action items that we have in our new roadmap. The roadmap consists of 12, 25 action items, and all these action items are extremely important. Many times people ask us, how do I get started? Where do I start? So the leadership committee identified 12 actions that are particularly feasible and relevant at the moment. So if you want a place that might be, to be right for intervention and right for the opportunity to get started, these 12 might be the ones for you. So the first ones of these that we're gonna talk about is educate and empower. So within educate and empower, we're really trying to increase awareness, give people knowledge, and, and information to empower them to make um, actions and choices. The next section we're talking about developing policies and mobilizing partnerships. So this is, this is definitely an important component of the public health framework. It allows to integrate these interventions and best practices into existing infrastructure or into policies and current practices, as well as educating policymakers about the importance of cognitive health and the important role that public health can play. The third is assuring a competent workforce. So this is really looking at developing a competent workforce, the existing workforce, and reach helping giving them the tools to help them prepare for this increasing population of older Americans with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, as well as training future um, public health professionals and healthcare professionals um, throughout the course of their, their learning experiences. Last component of this is monitor and evaluate. So within public health, um, we've, it's always important to keep track of what's going on. So through CDC's behavioral risk factor surveillance system, primarily the cognitive decline and the caregiving modules, we can understand what's going on in your state. 
um, how many people there are that have a cognitive decline, and also how many people are serving as caregivers. But the key is to take this public health information and to integrate it into programs and policies. So to highlight some of the data that CDC has been collecting, the first is through the subjective cognitive decline module within the VRFSS. You can see in the graphic on the right-hand side, the side of the slide, these states that have administered the module uh, from 2015 through 2017. States that have flashes are because they have administered the module in multiple years corresponding to the colors of those flashes. So really this, this module is doing this is allowing us to understand how people are evaluating their memory. Do they think it's getting worse? Is their memory causing difficulties with their daily living? Have they discussed this with a healthcare professional? And this was asked of adults who participated in the survey 45 years old and older. We know based on this data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, one out of nine adults 45 and older report that their memory has worsened in the past year. Importantly with this, we need to keep in mind that more than half of the people um, have not talked to their health care provider about the memory loss symptoms that they are experiencing. Similarly, within the behavioral risk factor surveillance system, we are able to collect information on caregiving. This provides us information on adults 18 years old and older who are caregivers, what the biggest problems they face in caregiving, what the needs are, as their needs are as caregivers, and if they are currently not a caregiver, do they anticipate being a caregiver in the next two years? The graphic on the right-hand side is set up similarly. Um, colors correspond to the states that administered the module in 2015, 2016, and 2017, and those with the slash marks have administered the module more than once. The CDC has taken this information and we have used it in ways to make it usable and accessible to states and communities. One way we have done that is through our infographics. Here I'm showing you our caregiver infographic on the left-hand side of the slide and our subjective cognitive decline infographic on the right-hand side. Now, these are, these are shown at a national level, so if you visit our website with the hyperlinks below the infographics, you can find the data for your specific state. So in summary, Alzheimer's disease and other dementias affect millions of people in our country. It's costly and the numbers are growing. Public health community really it must act now to simulate strategic changes in policy, systems, and environments. This new roadmap, we hope, will help public health and its partners chart a course for a dementia-prepared future. And State-specific subjective cognitive decline and caregiving data are available for implementation and to understand better the needs within your community. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, we did see a quick question in the chat function, which I'll just answer, that the actions that Lisa just um, shared with you are from that new uh, Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap the square cover. Now it's uh, my honor to turn uh, over to Ashi and Ms. Bransford Coombs, Certificate uh, Parent of the National Association of Counties, and also about uh, importance of the county health and human services. Thank you, Molly. Uh, it's great to be on this important uh, conversation. I think Dr. McGuire laid out a great um, uh, presentation on where we're going with the trends. What we're going to do now is, uh, is scope down a little bit in the practice community in our respective communities of what, how we're beginning to address some of these major challenges. And for San Diego, um, we are an integrated agency, uh, Healthy Human Services and Housing. And uh, you will see that at the heart of our work is how we're addressing vulnerable populations, um, the concept we talk about aging well. And, and we are trying to get, in some respects, ahead of the 
curve in our dementia-related challenges of our community with some of the systems, policy, practice, and program work that we're doing locally and learning, in fact, across our community. With NACO, the National Association of Counties, I serve as the, as the chair of Healthy Counties and, and also one of our policy committees. We were uh, several years ago uh, as an author, co-author of our, uh, one of our policy resolutions, um, we presented a proposed resolution for NACO to support funding, uh, which is this next slide here. It support funding for Alzheimer's disease research, community education and outreach, and caregiver support. And this really speaks to the heart of the Healthy Brain Initiative. Um, that we, that, that Dr. McGuire touched on. And it's important that <clears throat> what we're gonna demonstrate now in the next uh, time permitting is our work, the county's work that we're doing in San Diego that aligns with the four actions of the roadmap and regarding in terms of education and empowering, uh, monitoring and evaluation, developing policies and partnerships very importantly, and this concept of a competent, uh, diverse and inclusive workforce. And I'll say that this is not unique to just San Diego, that through our efforts of our 3,069 counties, through the National Association of Counties in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association, um, this is something we're really uh, addressing across our communities. For us in San Diego, our journey starts with a bigger, larger frame, which we call Live Well San Diego, and we embrace the concept that it goes broader than just much of what we'll talk about building better health, but it's central to that is this concept about safety, uh, safety in homes, safe communities. Uh, when we're talking about these issues around dementia related and the components around safety of our population, uh, Jennifer Bradford Coombs in a moment will talk about some of the initiatives that spill into not only inside the home and where we're providing caregivers, but outside in our community, ensuring creating safe places where people live, work, play, and age. And the this concept about thriving for us, which is social engagement. So much of what uh, we're also seeing is the importance of how do we connect people to our isolated who are experiencing dementia, whether it's in a skilled nursing facility, in a home uh, with extended family, how do we ensure we provide those social supports of engagement, which is a key piece of our work. I won't, on the next slide is our action framework. This is really speaks in, in depth around our entire playbook, if you will, for our population health and well-being for San Diego. We've been eight years at it now, um, and it really goes into a very thoughtful, strategic approach with measurement and data. What I'll really call out here is that central to this is our age-friendly, dementia-friendly strategies that I'm going to have Jennifer talk about, and so we'll turn it over to Jennifer now. Thank you, Nick. As you heard earlier, Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and continues to be the third leading cause of death among California and residents of San Diego County, just behind cancer and heart disease. In 2015, 11% of older adults in San Diego were living with this disease or a related form of dementia. That's nearly 3% of our county's total population. Assuming that that current trend continues, the number of people living with this disease is projected to increase over 36% by 2030. That's an estimated 115,000 older adults in our county that will be living with Alzheimer's or related dementias. Not only are residents with dementia facing financial challenges, but families and communities are also experiencing significant economic burden as we try to collaboratively provide long-term services and supports for this population. Over, over 214,000 San Diegans provided an estimated 244 million hours of unpaid care to people living with dementia in 2015. The economic value of that care is estimated to be worth over $3 billion. That's tremendous. And the in cost of informal caregiving is projected to increase by $4.2 billion by 2030. In response to this growing issue, our Board of Supervisors launched the Alzheimer's Project. The Alzheimer's Project is an example of the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap Element mobilized partnerships with key regional stakeholders leading efforts in each area. 
These four care core areas include research for a cure, led by our collaboration for cure, public awareness and education about the disease led by Alzheimer's San Diego, and delivery and impact of dementia-related services championed by the CARE Roundtable, clinical care and ind for individuals living with dementia facilitated by the Clinical Roundtable. I'll just describe one of the roundtables. The Clinical Roundtable aligns with assuring a competent workforce. <coughs> it brings together neurologists, psych psychiatrists, geriatricians, and other experts in the medical care field for Alzheimer's. We have developed standards and guidelines to promote best practices in the areas of screening, diagnosis, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. It is, a prim it is primary care physicians that see the vast majority of patients with this disease, and it's our goal to educate these frontline healthcare providers. The second initiative we'll discuss today also aligns with the Healthy Brain Initiative and includes elements of all four main action areas. In 2016, our county applied to become part of AARP and Dementia Friendly America's networks. AgeWell San Diego is a marriage of these two important global initiatives. In age-friendly community, people across the lifespan benefit from improvements such as more walkable, neighborhoods, transportation opportunities, and opportunities to get involved in the community. These communities also provide appropriate supports and opportunities for people to contribute to the community regardless of their abilities. The second component of AgeWell San Diego focuses on dementia-friendly communities, which takes into account the specific needs of people living with dementia and their caregivers. Different community sectors, from banks to libraries, can take simple steps to make life easier and safer for those with dementia. For example, a restaurant can designate a special area that's less busy and stimulating and offer it to a family with a person who's living with dementia. Through, AgeWell, through the AgeWell assessment and planning pro process, four core themes were identified by the community as areas to take action in to create an age-friendly and dementia-friendly San Diego County. These themes are health and community support, housing, social participation, transportation, and dementia-friendly. A team for each area is now working on implementation of the action plan. The dementia-friendly goals are infused in the other areas of the plan. For instance, one of the transportation goals is to train transit drivers to communicate with people with dementia. The health and community support team is working on increasing access to technology to live safely at home, especially for those with dementia. The work on AgeWell links the Healthy Brain Initiative in several ways. The teams are developing policies and mobilizing partnerships. In our corner of the U.S., we are educating and empowering the nation. As part of our work in education and empower the nation, we have looked at the recent research on brain health. As recent research has shown, five lifestyle behaviors and five diseases account for 35% of the risk for Alzheimer's and related dementias, or as we call it, 5535. This message will be wrapped into our work on the Alzheimer's Project and the AgeWell Initiative. Another exciting project that we launched recently is back in June, we implemented our Alzheimer's Response Team, which is a pilot project that will provide an alternative pathway with a specialized level of care for seniors experiencing a dementia-related crisis which prevents them from, this is to prevent them from ending up in the emergency room or in the criminal justice system. The Alzheimer's Response Team, or ART, is a pilot that is a public-private partnership between the County of San Diego, a community-based organization specializing in dementia care, along with a hospital, healthcare district, and law enforcement. This pilot consists of four steps for intervening with seniors experiencing a dementia-related crisis. First, contact will be made by a call received from a community agency or first responder to our call center. Next, an assessment is done to determine the need for a rapid response from the Alzheimer's response team. 
Then crisis stabilization will occur by attending to immediate non-medical needs by a social worker who will respond within an hour or depending upon the need within 24 hours. Follow-up with a case management support team will continue as our AIS team in conjunction with a non with the nonprofit entity provides the individual and their caregiver with case management or longer term assistance if needed. <coughs> So far, we've received over 40 calls for assistance in just a very small area of San Diego County. This program is conducted as a specialized response from our Adult Protective Services Program, and indeed many of the calls have complicated protective issues, such as self-neglect, mental suffering, neglect, or financial abuse. The referrals to the Alzheimer's response team have come from sources in this chart, including medical providers and first responders. The Alzheimer's response team has provided crisis response and case management. Through the program, we've referred and arranged for a variety of services to help these clients stay, stay, stay safely in their home relieve the caregivers of some of the burden of caregiving, and avoid future crises. Our evaluation will look at the decrease in hospitalization and time spent by first responders responding to those with dementia. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and to wrap up, uh, the, the Alzheimer's Project, the Age Well San Diego, the Alzheimer's Response Team, these are prime examples of all that can be achieved through leveraging existing resources to improve outcomes by our integration and the innovation really from within our, our community. It's a, at the heart of Live Well San Diego's vision. And each of these initiatives are working in different ways to address Alzheimer's disease and dementia-related illnesses, and the initiatives each move forward along the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap. So as you heard today, we're working with our physicians and, and our hospital partners and other care organizations to improve the health and well-being of individuals that are diagnosed with uh, dementia by increasing access and delivery of services, but also as a result of our preventive work, trying to get an advancement of diet and exercise that we know plays a role in prevention, uh, we believe, into the future. So collaborating with law enforcement, academic institutions, nonprofit, all sectors of the community on this important issue and ensuring that we're helping all of our vulnerable uh, adults and individuals afflicted by dementia illnesses is a priority not only for San Diego, but obviously with our National Association of Counties and counties throughout the country. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Machion and, and Ms. Bransford King. It was a wonderful presentation. And now it's my uh, pleasure and honor to ask uh, Ms. Chetkar to speak for the National Association of County and City Health Officials. Great. Thanks so much, Molly, and hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on the webinar today, and thanks again to our partners for inviting NATO to join. Uh, for those who may, know, who, uh, may not know, and next slide, please. Um, NACHO is the National Association of County and City Health Officials. We're the membership and support organization for the approximately 3,000 local health departments um, across the U.S., as well as the communities they serve. And we improve the health of communities by strengthening and advocating for local health departments. So I don't want to take too much time, but do want to acknowledge NACHO's commitment to supporting local health departments and the communities they serve in all aspects of healthy aging, including addressing dementia um, and creating age and dementia-friendly communities and public health systems. Um, NATO is really excited um, about the release of the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap, in the uh, third in the series, um, as a practical tool for local public health to really advance this work. Next slide, please. So as you've already heard, um, local health departments are really responsible for implementing these 10 essential public health services within their communities, and really is a great foundation to think about the work to be, address, work to be done in addressing dementia. Um, and you've already heard some great practical actions public health can take within the four domains of assuring a competent workforce, developing policies and mobilizing partnerships, 
educating and empowering the nation, and monitoring and evaluating. With an aging population, local health departments really are at the front lines of ensuring the healthy aging of older adults within their communities, and we're seeing more and more local health departments and their communities and partners prioritize aspects of healthy aging within their um, community assessment and improvement planning efforts, um, while also being attuned to, to the life course approach as well. Um, and as you've already heard, um, and on a broad level, kind of this focus on cognitive health really is, it involves a broad array of strategies around risk reduction, detection, diagnosis, ensuring quality of care, and more, um, and really this concerted focus on um, addressing social determinants of health within the community, which requires that community level, multi- and cross-sector partnerships across agencies um, and the resources to um, really address things like uh, social, social isolation at the community level. Um, so uh, NATO, again, is really committed to um, focusing on this work and will um, be continuing to collect examples um, as we move on um, with our work this year. So please don't hesitate to connect with us if you have examples on how um, your local health department or community is addressing um, aging in a way that we can learn from. Um, so thanks again for, uh, for the time, and I'll turn it back to you, Molly. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Chankar, and we're so appreciative of having Nacho uh, as a co-host for the webinar. Uh, now, Dr. Eiser, will you tell us about um, your healthy aging work and Alzheimer's in Southern Nevada, please? Well, like the other speakers, thank you for organizing this. Um, and um, thank you for looking at our slides and making sure that we didn't do too much duplication. Some is good, uh, too much is bad. Um, and I think what you've heard on this call so far is that we in public health use context and we use frameworks to develop our programs and plans. And so we've used um, a couple of frameworks. One is the healthy aging framework. Um, several months ago, uh, Department of Health and Human Services, the Public Health Service, um, and uh, NATO put together a Healthy Aging Conference, which really jump-started some of our work um, on this issue. And that's why I named this Healthy Aging and Alzheimer's Disease, because Alzheimer's disease is part of what we would like to, to incorporate into our healthy aging uh, plans. Next slide, please. So we are a health district. We're not a health department. Um, and there, is, um, there, there are significant differences. We are a freestanding governmental agency here in Southern Nevada. And when you think of Southern Nevada Health District, think of Las Vegas. Um, and despite the glitter and the glamour that Las Vegas tends to show itself as being, uh, you scratch underneath the surface and we have all of the same issues as of the other big city urban areas uh, do with poverty, um, um, aging issues that aren't well addressed, and so on. Um, and we are now up to about 540 employees. So as a district, um, next slide, please. Uh, as, a, as a district then, uh, I need to tell you that we encompass about 2.2, uh, 2.3 million people down here who are our citizens as compared to 3 million in the entire state. So we have approximately uh, 72, 73 percent of the entire population down here in Clark County, Southern Nevada Health District, or in, in the Las Vegas area. And what that means is that no matter what the disease is, uh, whether it's sexually transmitted diseases, whether it's tuberculosis, whether it's high blood pressure, and so on, what, what happens generally in Southern Nevada tends uh, to drive the data in the rest of the state. Uh, Rena just showed you uh, this uh, wheel. And the thing that I like to do when I uh, talk to my new employees is to talk about how this is different from clinical care. So there is a similarity. Assessment, if you have a cough and you go in to see your doctor or your APRN, your doctor or APRN will do an assessment of you, listen to your lungs, uh, ask you questions about your history, and, and so on. Um, I'm sorry, if you could go back to the previous slide. Uh, so that's the assessment piece that your doctor will do. We do the same thing, but as uh, Dr. McGuire said, we do this on a population basis. Policy development is where you get a differential di diagnosis. What are the causes 
of your cough. And then assurance is I'm now going to use all of the assessment, your history, your physical examination, I'm going to use policy development, my plan for your treatment, and then I'm going to make sure that that works. And that's roughly equivalent to the assurance piece. And so again, this is what we do on a population uh, basis. Now, next slide. So um, here's our assessment. What is the extent of Alzheimer's disease in Southern Nevada? Next slide, please. And if we look at that and we look at the number of people in the United States, in the state of Nevada, and in Clark County, and these are just rough numbers and projections. Uh, currently, you see, if you go to, uh, to year 2030, for example, that there are over 8,000 cases in the United States, uh, about 65,000 uh, 65, uh, cases in Nevada, and 44,000 in Clark County. Next slide, please. And so we start to look at this and start to compare these, and the red shows you the United States and the rise in those cases. The green uh, is in Nevada, and you see the, per uh, I'm sorry, the um, green is in Nevada, and the purple is in Clark County. Next slide. And this is how uh, we sort of rank up. And where you can't see is that the green, sort of in the left-hand side of the middle, is the United States. And the red um, on the, to the left of that is Nevada, and the number of cases in uh, Clark County are in the yellow. So in this case, we don't seem to be driving the rate as much as we are for sexually transmitted diseases and other things um, in the state of Nevada. Next slide, please. And if we look at the age-adjusted death rates due to Alzheimer's disease by gender and year, uh, you can see that this roughly would mirror uh, what we see in the United States, but this gives us an idea of what our local population is like so we can start to address the needs of our local population. Next slide, please. Uh, and then uh, if we look at race, ethnicity, um, most of our cases, uh, the age-adjusted death rates would be in um, uh, Anglo-Americans, uh, the next in African-Americans, the next in Hispanics, and the lowest rate would be in um, Asians and Pacific Islanders. Next slide. Um, and now we want to look at what is the, in, in another way, what is the impact of this on our uh, health system down here? So if you look at the, on the left-hand part of the slide, uh, the percentage of emergency department visits due to Alzheimer's disease by age group is listed there. And, and again, I'm not going to spend much time on, the, on these, but you have these slides. Uh, to, to refer back to. And then if we look at coexisting conditions, it's much more severe and much more significant uh, among the older age groups. And that makes sense, but we want to know what that impact really is so we can start to address that. Next slide. So if we look at the emergency department visits with Alzheimer's disease as a coexisting condition, uh, which is essentially that right-hand pie chart that you saw in the previous slide, the top primary diagnosis groups are, as shown here, injury, poisoning, and certain other consequences, diseases of the genitourinary system, diseases of the circulatory system, diseases of musculoskeletal system and connective tissue, and then other things. Next slide. So we want to look at um, the self-reported experience, and I think Dr. McGuire had a couple of slides on this. So subjective cognitive decline is the self-reported experience of worsening or more frequent confusion or memory loss. So in complete disclosure, I'm the youngest of nine kids, and I'm not a spring chicken. Uh, but my youngest sister, who was nine years old, older than I am, died of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the next younger brother than that, um, Michael, uh, his wife is now suffering from moderate uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And my next older brother recently died about three months ago, and he had uh, at least mild cognitive impairment. So this drives home to me, and probably to many of you who are listening in, uh, a personal basis uh, that you can uh, use to start to evaluate uh, the kinds of issues that occur in your own family. And now from a population basis, we want to look at those, and we are looking at those um, as San Diego has on a, a broader issue from the public health uh, issue. If we can go to the next slide. 
Uh, this will also show you some relatively, uh, some relative scores. So if you look at this, um, Clark County, my county, uh, has the highest rate of reporting subjective cognitive uh, decline. But you remember when we looked at the data of diagnosis, that doesn't match up. Um, and if you look at the red line to the next, that's Nevada. And then if you look at the green line, that's the United States. So the data doesn't, uh, the data of diagnoses doesn't uh, match up to the data that shows a subjective cognitive decline. Uh, and so that makes it a much more urgent issue for us. This kind of a slide does. Uh, next slide, please. So again, using a framework, and we're now into that second part of that wheel that you saw at the beginning of my slides and, and that you saw in Rena's slides, we look at uh, policy development. I don't need to give you uh, all of the data here, but the thing that you need to know I've highlighted in red is the role of public health includes intervention tools such as increased surveillance, public policy development, and education. That goes along with the Healthy Brain Initiative, and we have a role in assuring access to care and advocating for funding for health care. So we only live on uh, two legs of the tax stool uh, here in um, Nevada. We don't have uh, an income tax, so that means that the money we have to address all of the problems that we have really exists on, in my case, only on property tax dollars plus the dollars that I get from CDC, HRSA, and other public health agencies uh, to do the kind of work that we do. Next slide, please. So we have uh, begun working with community partners to create a healthy aging plan. We're in our third iteration of a community health assessment, uh, which looks at the community health as a whole, and this will end up being one of our priorities for a community health improvement plan. So Alzheimer's disease, while not limited uh, only to older folks, is correlated with age. We have applied for and anticipate receiving grant funds to better track Alzheimer's. And again, going back to those two bar charts that you saw, the subject, subjective decline uh, shows a much greater potential problem here than what our actual data now shows us. And this data will give us a better foundation for our plans. We are using uh, Healthy Aging and CDC as our guides. Next slide, please. Um, and th these are the issues. I used to have a slide on each one of these to tell you what we're uh, engaging in on how to educate and empower, develop policies, assure a competent workforce, and monitor and evaluate. Uh, but Molly and I agreed that we wouldn't go into that detail since Dr. McGuire really did. Next slide, please. So we are developing a healthy aging initiative to include Alzheimer's. It'll encompass uh, Healthy People 2020, the CDC Healthy Brain Initiative, um, and healthy aging as part of our uh, way of addressing this. We have completed much of the assessment and some of the policy development section. And again, if you go back to that wheel, that's that second, uh, it, it'd be about five o'clock on that wheel. So we plan to finalize this. And then the assurance section, which is really well outlined in the Healthy Brain Initiative, uh, will incorporate the assurance section to monitor, evaluate, and improve our efforts. And uh, Jennifer and Nick, uh, you can be sure that I'll contact you to help us with jump-starting some of our planning. And, and by the way, I sort of have a professional crush on Wilma Wooten, so please do tell her hi for me. Uh, but you have a great health department there. Um, and one of the things that we like to do um, is to work with our, assess our Big Cities Health Coalition, the 30 largest health jurisdictions in the nation of which we are one, San Diego is another, to help us work together to address problems of joint concern. Next slide. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak today. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Iser. And, um, you know, I think it's just so helpful to give everyone kind of a grounding of how you go back and forth in terms of the, you know, the assessment and linking it with the other parts of essential public health services and, and leading into the policy development and the assurance. So that was very, very helpful. Um, we are just a minute or two away from our question and answer period, and uh, so please do send in your questions and comments now using the chat function, 
Um, but while uh, we'll give you a minute to do that, I, I did want to ask Dr. McGuire uh, to reflect back on some of the things she heard um, over the last 30 minutes or so. Thank you very much, Molly. Very impressive presentations. It was exciting to hear how and hear and learn about how the different examples of public health are truly in action and how you're taking data, utilizing that data, conducting those assessments to really to, to measure the impact that you're making and the quality of lives and the people that are in your communities. And really heard a lot also about the cross-sector collaboration. I think as public health professionals, we know that we we need each other to accomplish things. We need, pe we need people at all different sectors, public, private, and at all different levels of government. And I really could see that um, coming out in the presentations today. Um, very excited to see the work that you all are doing. It's demonstrating the, your recognition of older adults in your communities and improving their quality of life and maintaining their health and independence as long as possible and recognizing that life course perspective with Alzheimer's disease and other disease processes as well. And I'll turn it back to Amali and for questions. All right. Um, thank you so much, Dr. McGuire, and I uh, really appreciate the many questions and comments uh, that we've received via chat today. Uh, it always makes the webinar a lot more fun and interesting for us. Um, I will just uh, quickly address a couple of these. One is that, yes, the slides and recordings will be available. I will send that next week. Um, so look out uh, for that. And it really does provide, there are so uh, many kind of rich lessons and interesting nuances in both, in all the presentations that will allow you to look at those. Uh, someone else had also asked about uh, where they might be able to get hard copies of the new Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap. And if you contact your local Alzheimer's Association chapter, they will be able to help you get um, Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmaps uh, that we have been able to produce with CDC. So those are available. Uh, and then this is a question for you, Dr. McGuire. Uh, one of the participants wondered where, where they can find those wonderful CDC infographics. Thank you very much. You can find those CDC infographics at cdc.gov slash aging. And then when you reach that page, there will be a tab for data and statistics, and it will allow you to find uh, the state-specific infographics for the, both the cognitive decline and the caregiving module, as well as national-level graphics. It is, there is a lot on that cdc.gov slash aging website, and I do hope after the webinar you'll, you'll go to it. Um, I think we have uh, time for just one more question before we wrap up and, and tell you about where to, uh, also you can go to find the roadmap and other resources and data. So uh, this one I'll, you know, share with you, uh, Dr. Iser and uh, Mr. Machion. Uh, one of the presenters was wondering uh, if there's any particular strategies, just kind of thinking more broadly across your career careers, um, for addressing, you know, with a public health approach, rural residents um, who may be living with dementia. So then the, the question again is, uh, are there any particular strategies or guidance um, ideas that you would have for addressing uh, rural populations that are living with dementia. Nick, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Uh, please, I'll follow you. Okay, so um, both, both San Diego and um, my county uh, encompass rural areas. We're different in Nevada for those of you who have been here because my county actually encompasses even uh, frontier areas, uh, places with only one or two people per square mile. And then in the counties next to me, these are absolutely frontier counties. They, have, they don't have health departments. They rely on the state to provide some services to them. And so um, I, I have taken under my wing probably almost two-thirds of the state uh, to encompass the four counties nearest to me, Nye, uh, Esmeralda, 
uh, White Pine and Lincoln to try to provide some services to them. And in doing so, we're helping to develop a, a community health assessment for those rural counties. So we need to have an idea, a better idea, looking at the data of where those counties fit in uh, to the, um, the demographics of Alzheimer's uh, disease. And we are in the process of doing that. Um, so where it, and, and, and I was at the health officer in a county called Nevada County in California, which is uh, a rural, it's probably not frontier, but it's certainly a rural county. And uh, it, it's, you have to start with the data and you have to start where locations as best you can with some geomapping um, if you can, especially in rural areas. So there, some of our nearby counties do have incorporated cities. Some of them have no incorporated cities at all, but they have townships. And so that's where we're going to start to work with them and to try to provide some services. We'll, we will work, all of them do have a social services department. So we as a health district will work with them to develop some healthy aging initiatives and to look at their Alzheimer's and, and go forward with that. That's not a concrete answer to you, and maybe Nick has a better answer. Uh, no, Dr. Eisler, I think you hit it well. Uh, San Diego has a rural component as well. I think at the heart of it is this is where the public-private partnerships matter. Uh, working with our U.S. Post Office, for example, on checking in on folks where they live. Working with the local uh, libraries. Um, we've done a lot of uh, teleconnection with veterans and even telepsychiatry. How we bring the use of technology and inside homes with caregivers and supporting organizations. Um, building off our home delivered meals programs. So much of, um, you know, it's how do we align and better really look at the architecture, particularly in the rural. I will say though, some of the most innovative work comes from our rural communities because of the necessity to really look at these innovative uh, resources and how they leverage and, and kind of align them together uh, to serving particularly people who are more isolated in rural communities. Thank you both so much. Those are wonderful insights. Uh, in the interest of time and honoring everyone's time, uh, I do want to talk about just real briefly that uh, you can download the new HBI roadmap at alls.org uh, slash public health. And we really encourage you to explore this greatly expanded website. You'll find examples of roadmap implementation by some of the uh, country's best uh, state and local public health departments, you'll be able to get your uh, BRSSS data and find resources to help you easily and efficiently integrate, start integrating Alzheimer's into your existing initiatives. Uh, today we heard and learned about the impact of Alzheimer's and other dementias, which is growing uh, across the nation, um, but particularly, you know, from a local health department, county health department, city health department, we know that they are on the front lines of that um, response. The examples we heard today really demonstrate that the mission is possible, and by adopting the, particularly the strategies we heard about in Southern Nevada, uh, in San Diego County, uh, as well as um, you know the initiatives and the strategies that Dr. McGuire outlined in the Healthy Brain Initiative Roadmap. Um, you know, those are wonderful ways that everyone can get started and, and it's, uh, the time is now to, to do that. So truly, it was an honor and privilege. I want, do want to thank our fantastic speakers. Thank you so much for all you did in terms of sharing your wisdom and experience with us. Um, and we are very grateful for uh, all of you who spent the last hour with us. When you uh, get an email from me later this afternoon, Please do take a couple minutes to give feedback on the webinar. Uh, next week, I will be sending to everyone who registered uh, the PowerPoint slides in the, as a PDF, a link to the recording webinar, and uh, the report wrote the new roadmap. And just a final reminder, do um, check out today, health.org slash public health and cdc.gov slash